People say we live in a digital world, and often that's true. But sometimes we need to get something from a paper world into the digital world. That's where scanners come in. Here it is, a scanner. There are lots of different types of scanners today, from combo printer scanners to portable ones that read business cards and everything in between. The most popular and versatile type of scanner is probably the flatbed scanner. They usually have a flat glass surface and at least eight and a half by 11 inches and a cover. As computer peripherals go, they are relatively inexpensive and very useful. They are able to scan anything you put on them. Yes, anything in great detail and make digital raster images out of them. The files can then be saved to your hard drive or printed directly out. Perhaps you have an old photo that you just found and you want to get an electronic copy so you can touch it up and send it to your family or friends. Maybe your picture was in the newspaper and you want to save it and reprint it on paper that won't fade. Or you have some photos that are one of a kind but really could use a little touch up because they've faded or been scratched. Then you need a scanner. If you are looking for a scanner, then the most important thing to consider is probably how you're going to use it. The technology is far enough along that even the cheapest models will probably be enough to meet all your scanning needs. When you look at buying a scanner, the first thing to find is what resolution it can scan. This is usually well over 1,000 DPI, the dots per inch. So with almost any scanner, you can take that picture and scan it on a high resolution setting, like 2400 DPI and blow your pet dog's face up nice and big while keeping that nice print quality. Remember, this can also be useful if you would like to crop pieces of the image and focus on just one smaller item in the picture. Now, scanning in an image at a high resolution will create a really big file, well over 20 megabytes for an 8.5 by 11. But don't worry, you can always change that later. Let's just take a quick look at a sample scanner interface. Most scanners will allow you to capture an image a couple of ways. There are often purely automated modes that will allow you to activate the scanner with just the touch of a button on the scanner itself. This will utilize default settings and save files to a default directory and possibly bring up the scanner application on your computer automatically. If you have set these defaults, this can be a quick and easy way to allow multiple new users to access the scanner and make good use of it. Most scanners today will automatically recognize the borders of an image and automatically crop it. It's fantastic. If this convenience sounds great and your scanner doesn't do it, invest the hundred dollars and get a new one. You can also bring up the scanner software that came with your system and play with the settings there. The settings from the software side will typically be an setting that uses all defaults, a medium setting that allows you to customize some features, and an advanced setting that allows you to manipulate all the different scanning features like destination file type, resolution, destination directories, color enhancements, cropping, etc. There are typically quite a few options and sometimes this can overwhelm new users, but if you plan on getting the most out of your scanner, spend some time and learn its features. Let's go through the whole process. We've got the picture and we want to scan it and crop it. So we put it on the scanner along the edge to keep it straight, either in the corner or the middle, depending on the scanner. We bring up the software to do the scan. Let's make it something reasonable for printing a 5x7 image for a frame. So we will scan it just a little better than we need to print. 600 DPI should do the trick. Remember, the higher the DPI, the longer it will take to scan, and the bigger the file will be. Most likely the first thing that will happen is that your scanner will take a preview scan. It will probably do this when you open your scanner software. And you will also have a preview button if you've changed something and you need to preview again. Once you have your preview, you can crop the image so you're not scanning more than you have to, and hit the scan button. And let's see. Fabulous. You can probably also capture an image from a scanner through your image editing software. Often, when you install your scanner software, it will also find your various imaging editing programs and install something called a Twain driver. 
This allows most imaging software packages to import from a Twain source, your scanner, directly into the program. If you know you are going to be editing the image anyway, this is often the fastest way to go. Now that you have it in your editing software, you can do anything with it. We had mentioned that you should probably choose your scanner based on what you're eventually going to do with it. Let's say you have to scan in thousands of pages of a document. You'll want to ensure your scanner has a sheet feeder, like on a big copy machine. Doing it manually on a flat bed would take much too long, and the time you save will be more than worth the extra money. Some scanners also have interesting sh sharing features, like say you work in an office where you want to share a scanner with everyone else. Some scanners can be plugged into a network, and then you can enter your email into the scanner, and it will automatically email you the scan document. Very cool and helpful for certain environments. Some specialty applications are handheld scanners and business card scanners. One feature that most scanners have these days, but card scanners make particular use of, is optical character recognition, or OCR. Using this feature will allow you to scan in that business card and have it download not as a raster image, but right into your contact database. Because it actually reads the characters on the card. Remember the thousands of pages you had to scan? Well, if you scan them in as images, it would take quite a bit of space to store all those raster images. And you couldn't do searches, editing, or anything else too useful with that content. What if the scanning software was able to read the characters? Now, using optical character recognition, all those pages can be scanned into a text document rather than a raster image. You can search and edit, and it will be much smaller to store. That's a general overview of scanners. Remember to buy one based on your specific needs and try out the options your scanner offers. They are inexpensive and very useful. So get out there and start scanning.